Hello. In this video, we're going to look on new Adobe AI generative fill. Currently, it's available in beta version, but very soon it should be available in all full release. Right here, we have our image. And what does creative fill allowed us to replace some item and match our image? I was playing with first original version and it wasn't that good, but the recent AI update make it quite a bit different. So let's first look what resolution we have. And this is my first problem was, if we're going to image, image size, you'll notice right here our image pixels will be a bit better, 3000 by 2000. So it's quite a bit large size for the image. And when I create a small element, I want to be sure the resolution tone and everything will match our image. Right here, I have a cup in a kind of a Rococo style, but it's empty. I want to create maybe something more interesting, maybe fill up with liquid. In this case, I'm going just outline this cup. So we'll go like right here. Okay. And as we outline, you'll notice come up generative fill. I'm going to click on this. And now we have it our text. So let's go ahead, Rococo teacup, fill it with a T. Okay, so let's go ahead right now and click on generate. It is to take a little bit of time, need to connect to the server, and soon it should be done. And right here we have it our created. Let's look. Notice we have a nice cup replacement from original. Again, this was before and this new one kind of more matching in the style, which is very interesting. And we have it also different version one with kind of cup on the top. And I think I like this one because we have it actually liquid inside in this cup. So let's go ahead. Just zoom out. And notice there you go. There is our cup. So this is what we had before. And this we have it now. Of course, it's up to your creative um, approach, which cup you like it. But I think this is look very interesting. Let's look on a different approach to the generative feel. So right here we have it, our person. And for example, I want to change maybe outfit. I want to change how person look, make something different about this. So I'm going to click on select subject. It is again utilizing new AI engine. And after our subject selected, you'll notice we have a generative field. So let's go click on this. And inside we can write cyberpunk, steampunk, um, adventure person. You can come up with maybe something else, but I think this is will give it us a very interesting look. And after this, we can go ahead and click generate. Okay, and right here we have it already generated, and we can preview and see what other character was replaced. Actually, this one is look quite a bit nice. So we have very nice theme. Of course, the cyberpunk will have it a very strong colors, and that's what happened here. But general contrast and other ones applied. Notice it is putting on its own layer, and of course, because of that, you can very easy blending if you need it with another image to create even better look. And of course, you can use it just for small retouching or removing elements. For example, right here, I have an image I created before, and I put a text, but problem with this text, it's already on flattened image. I want to remove it and maybe use it for something else. So in this case, I can go ahead, select my lasso, going around the text, create generative fill, and without pushing, typing anything, just click generate. And now you can see it is totally removed. You can of course slide back and forward to see how it will recreate hair, like where's the beard going, but you can see it is actually work quite a bit nice creating. So it did analyze picture and remove it. And this is not the old style of filling in image because otherwise work differently. But right here, you can see it's actually create a very, very nice job on this. Let's go ahead and look on this example. 
So right here I have a room that could be magic, but we have a problem. We have the reflections, we have some tile on the ceiling, and the fireplace does not look like fireplace at all. So let's start with fireplace. What I will do usually, I will find some way, put it compositing, try to blend in. So with a fill, AI generated fill, I can just go ahead, select over, click generate, and type fireplace. Let's go ahead, click generate, and here we have a different versions of fireplace. So you can go through all of them and see which one fit best. I think this one will look kind of nice, so I will leave this here. And as well, I have these reflections, so I can go around, select those reflections, generate a fill, and click generate. Notice what's happening. I'm not on my background layer. I'm just keeping on stacking them up and up. And here, almost magically, this is removed. It took me some time when I do by my uh, retouching alone to create this, but it's much, much faster. So same things, we can go ahead, just select, actually, you know what, let's go select a little bit bigger because I don't like some of those elements here. So we can select them, click generate, maybe magic room. You can add some additional words so it's kind of knowing which format it should create it. And because it's magic room, it's magically removed those styles. Of course, we have different variations and versions we can look through, but I think this one is work very well. We have some another elements so we can kind of like select and generate also to remove all those different elements we don't want it. Sometimes what I will do, I'll create and select a bunch of different them all over places. And it's kind of very nice how AI will go over, remove them and replace with the properly matching elements. Okay, let's go ahead and look on one last one. And this is work a little bit different because you don't necessarily can go inside and modify. You can also use it for your canvas. We go switch to the canvas tool. And one I want to be sure it's enable content aware. I'm going to little bit extend my canvas. You can extend a little bit more. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and we going very crazy. So we extend quite a bit more. It will be like 130. And we'll go press enter. Right now it will utilize a little bit older engine to create. And you can see right here it does create kind of ugly looking. What are we going to do? Select again a lasso tool, go around, select elements, and now we can generate. We can go ahead, cyberpunk, write our what we want. If it's cyberpunk, street, rain, um, fog, maybe a little bit far ground buildings. Nice things about this, you can use it your natural language. So as you're writing and describing, it's what I'm doing right here, just write with my natural language. Okay, we can add more, but I think it's okay for this test. And we'll just run generation. And here we have it, our replacement. Notice it's look very nice. I think I like how they add wall. Of course, we have a different variations here. They're not all look very good. But if you still don't find one like right here was I like how it's actually look. But if you still don't like it, you can go ahead, try generate again. You won't lose any of those variations. Just additional three variations will be added. And here are three more variations. You maybe like them a little bit more. Let's look through all of them. Oh, this one actually look also very nice. And you can see right here we have our first three variations and we have other variation. This is also very nice maybe just a little bit color changing. And of course, we can go ahead, play a little bit with opacity, kind of blending a little bit more with opacity. But here we have it a very nice. Actually, this one has looked also very good. Okay, so here's the overall view how the new AI generated field tool work inside the Photoshop. 
and I'm really looking forward to when it will be fully released and we can use it. But you can see for the photographers, digital artists and creators, it's a very huge help. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and please subscribe to the channel.